Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are looking at the Neki uh, Supernova Ultra Mark II. <laughs> this is uh, uh, one of the successor models to the Neki Supernova, such as the green and cream two-tone models. Uh, well, this is also a two-tone model, uh, pink and cream. And uh, a couple of changes were made. Mechanically, it's very similar. Uh, they added a couple of features to the machine, such as, uh, I think there's a built-in needle threader. Um, what else did we did I note here? Oh, they changed some of the things in terms of the knobs, the knob style. Uh, it is still an all-metal machine. They have uh, changed the uh, way you pull off the uh, hand wheel. Um, I'll have to go back and look at the Supernova. I'm pretty pretty sure they did because I've removed Neki hand wheels before. Now, uh, I've shown you guys in the past, you've seen the, you saw me in the last video, we took off. Actually, let's show this to you again today because I want you guys to see this so it's not as confusing as it could be. Uh, normally, when you take the hand wheel off of a vintage machine, we're talking vintage here, uh, Normally what you would do is you would unscrew, you take, you loosen the set screws of the knot, the clutch knob. Behind that normally is a clutch washer. And the washer will often just sort of flop off or pop off, but this one does not because this hand wheel is designed to come off differently. Oh yes, they decided to change the design. <laughs> Why, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know why. It look, this one looks as expensive, this system, not the wheel itself. This system looks just as expensive as um, the prior model. So who knows what prompted them to do this? I cannot get into the imaginations of engineers, uh, many of them long past. But anyway, we're going to talk today about how to uh, remove the hand wheel. Now, why do we want to remove the hand wheel? Normally, uh, you don't remove the hand wheel as a part of your normal maintenance on a machine, unless, of course, you want to change the uh, uh, motor belt. And this motor belt, I haven't gotten a chance, I've gotten the cover off here, I haven't had a chance to truly inspect the motor belt, so I don't know I'm going to replace it, no need to if it's you know, it's it's unlikely this is the very original motor. Uh, it's possible, but uh, not very likely. But in any case, we'll inspect it. But before we can do that, we've got to take the hand wheel off. Because the hand wheel of a sewing machine is basically a big pulley. And the belt connects from the little pulley attached to the motor up to the hand wheel. And of course, the hand wheel is attached to a drive shaft, which drives all of this glorious <laughs> Uh, metal machinery in here that helps you produce your stitches. So um, anyway, we're going to do that. Now, I had mentioned to you guys, this is not aluminum. This is steel. It originally, uh, the, the earlier supernovas had those beautiful polished aluminum hand wheels. And it, you know, I don't know if they were trying to lighten the weight of the machine, or maybe it was just for that gorgeous Italian style, I don't know. But they may have reduced the cost, but this is not a durability issue. Most vintage sewing machines don't have aluminum hand wheels. They all, all most of the great machines have steel. Um, and in this case, uh, instead of sort of doing a nickel plating or chrome plating, they chose to paint it, and it's perfectly fine. This is... Uh, this is a very strong stout hand wheel, but I noticed the difference and you know sometimes they make changes and maybe I don't know if it was to save money, but that's not a negative because it does not affect the durability and the ma or the magnificent sewing of the machine. So you always want to be careful when you look at something say well they made a change and I don't like what they did. In this case I believe it's purely aesthetic uh, and maybe you know they hey they, they, they wanted to um, have the cream hand wheel match the cream knobs. Who knows? Who knows what their thinking was? But anyway, we're going to talk about this one. And you can see I retrieved the little screw that fell on the floor. Uh, and this is uh, this is a good strong steel um, uh, clutch knob. So I'm going to set that down. Now, 
normally we would simply remove. In fact, washers will often just sort of flop off because they're not, you know, they're held, you, they seat, and this one looks seated, but that's, you know, we're not going to remove it from this side. We need to get the hand wheel off, and the washer is not preventing that. It's, uh, this washer still functions, this knob functions in the way the earlier machine did. But now I want to show you guys, got some, I think we've got some decent light in here today. And I want to show you how we're going to do this. Um, or that's what we're going to attempt, I should say. Uh, okay, so what you want to do is you want to go and find, you can either try this with an Allen wrench, right? Uh, uh, an Allen wrench is, I can't remember if it's oct not octagonal, hexagonal um, uh, tool that you use for uh, bolts that have, uh, you know, they have an opening instead of a Phillips or a regular straight head screw, screwdriver screw. You will often sometimes see, sometimes they're called hex bolts. Uh, people have different names for them. And why they chose to use it here, I don't know. It might have been a way to keep the, uh, the, the sewer from messing around with it and, and trying to loosen it because maybe Neki wanted you to bring it in for service. I don't know. But anyway, let's zoom in here and show you guys what we need to do. So let's take a look. We have, uh, let's get our zoom in here. And I think the lighting is pretty darn good. You'll be able to see this without my, well, I had electric light. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Okay, so you have a bolt right here, and then you have another one. You have two, and we need to loosen them. Um, now, because this has sat, and it could have sat since 1959, 1960, who knows? It's been sitting a while. So what I did was I took... And I just went into my, I have a closet full of all sorts of penetrant products. I'm going to have to hold this out. You guys know, because this particular one is three-in-one oil. But you don't have to use this one. Uh, some people will try WD-40. Uh, there. What else do I have in there? I have liquid wrench, but that's really stinky, and I don't like using it indoors this time of year. I'm not opening my windows in uh, February. Um and what else have I got in there? I think I've shown you guys several. I recently bought some PB Blaster, but I haven't used that yet. Typically what I do is when I think I'm gonna need help to get something loosened, you can just try sewing machine oil. In fact, sewing machine oil and a little warmth or just letting it sit, sometimes that's just enough. But neckies are known if they've sat for years and years, they take a little more coaxing to get things to loosen up. Now, once this machine has been gone through, it's been cleaned, lubricated, you can sew with this machine. It's an heirloom quality machine, and it's not, uh, it's, it's not gonna be an issue. You're not gonna have to go back and use penetrants to loosen it. But, you know, when parts sit together, and they've been sitting for decades and decades, um, you know they can get a little sticky, and that's that's okay. They're not there's nothing wrong with them. They just they're just waiting to be woken up, shall we say? So I put uh, and I did this earlier just to give it time to sit. But I just put uh, what did I do? I came in here and I put some, and I'm just put another one little squirt right, but where this is right to the left. Got to give you guys a better view here. Right over here to the left of this piece is uh, an opening, a little slit, and that is the drive shaft that is that this, this piece and the hand wheel are both sitting on. Uh, let's come out a little bit. Okay, so this piece, and there's a little gap here. I'm going to just put a little bit of this 3-in-1. Uh, again, I did this yesterday. Let it sit a little bit. There we go. And did a little bit more. Uh, you do not need a lot uh, as it is. You want to have something to anything that drips. Um, you want to definitely get that up. Um, now, uh, and you don't want any on this on this uh, on this lovely, really good condition uh, bobbin winding tire. In fact, this is. Uh, I'm willing to bet this tire has been replaced because it's it's virtually brand new. And any kind of rubber parts, they don't last, you know, decades and decades. Okay, and so what else did I do? Over here, on this side, 
I took, we'll put a little bit more again. You can see, well, right now you can't. Okay. Right here, you see threads, and these threads <clears throat> are for the uh, the clutch knob that we took off. But this this whole assembly sits on the drive shaft. And the end of the drive shaft, if I lower this down a little bit, you guys can see a little bit better, is in here. So put a little bit, you know, I'm not going to do much because I did some yesterday. But we've put um, some of this 3-in-1 oil on both ends. Now we we don't have oil on the drive shaft um, that is being covered. Okay. And by the way, I took the reason I took this uh, bobbin winding tire mechanism is it hides your view here and it hides my view too. So we're gonna I could pull it all the way down, but I don't need to do that. I'm just gonna let it rest as if we were winding a bobbin, and that gives us um, a nice view here. So we can see what we're doing. So I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so what I've done is I, and you'll have to play around with which one of these you use. Now this tool is, um, yeah, this is, uh, it has like, a, like an Allen wrench end and then the rest of it is smooth. So I'm going to take this and you'll have to play around with the sizes to find the one that fits. If it's too big, it won't go in. If it's too small, it'll just spin on you. But this one turns. And guys, if you look, let me zoom in for you. Watch the bolt. If I can get my fat thumbs out of the way here. Okay, and you can see it turning. I put this in and it didn't take much. I was rather pleased because you just never know um, how much, you know, how stubborn it's going to be. Um, so I've loosened both, and then I, I've had uh, viewers ask me before, they'll say, well, how am I supposed to get something like a Necky hand wheel off? It's, it's unusual for many brands. Uh, Singer hand wheels almost never stick on me, sometimes, but it's unusual for that to happen. Now, this is the part where you want to go gentle and easy. <laughs> uh, uh, let's get you guys raised up a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit here. Now, so what are we doing uh, from here? I'm going to take something, and you can do this with anything. You can take a rag. I've got a, this is a, an old remnant I was using to do test stitching on, uh, I think it was from the other necky actually. Uh, and I'll get a couple of more here. These little, but if, you know, you can use anything. You can use a rag, you can use a shop towel, you can use a sock if you want. I mean, what, you're, what we're trying to do is find something like these little, uh, these are from old khaki fabric. Um, what we're wanting to do is cover the edge of this hand wheel because we're going to lightly and gently tap it. And I mean gently, okay? So, come here. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to cover, let's use this other piece, this will be easier. Okay, I want to use this to kind of, it's not so much of a cushion as it is a buffer. We don't want to scratch the beautiful paint. It's been so well preserved. Now, what can we do? You have several options. This is a uh, soft, um, similar, I think it's a silicone mallet. You can get a rubber mallet. And you can also take a piece of wood if you have, you know, a scrap piece of wood. Um, a ruler would probably snap. It's probably not strong enough. Maybe a dowel, if you have a wooden dowel. Uh, in my case, I've got, uh, and then I have a, a regular uh, hammer here. And, but I'm gonna take, this regular hammer has a nice rubber end that's much more of like a rubber mallet. So what am I doing? I'm gonna have to pull this back. You guys, I don't know how much of this you're gonna be able to see, if it makes sense. But what I'm essentially going to do is I'm gonna take this rubber end of my hammer, okay? And I'm gonna nest it right up, where it's going is right behind the wheel, okay? I'm gonna put it here. You do not wanna hit any other part of the machine. Be careful of this piece. This piece is your bracket for where your bobbin winder pushes up. So again, you gotta really pay attention to what you're doing here. And I'm just gonna come uh, off away from that piece, right? Now, what am I doing over here? 
I'm going to take and I'm going to tap with the rubber mallet here. I'm going to tap uh, against the hammer, right? And notice I'm doing this in a good. I'm not whacking it. I'm not chopping wood here. What I'm what I'm basically trying to do is to gently coax this. Now let's say you guys are doing it. Let's say you said, okay, I'm going to watch this video and I'm going to do what he did. <clears throat> well, sometimes your your hand wheel will be more stuck. Maybe somebody stored their necky in an attic and it baked the oil for years and years. That did not happen with this one. If this one had suffered that fate, I would know it because this, this wheel would not be moving. I don't know if you guys can see, but if you look closely, I'll point with my, uh, let's zoom back in. I don't know if you guys can see this yet. I don't know if the gap has gotten wider, but the gap has gotten wider here, right? So I think the view is a little off. Here we go. Zoom in. The gap, guys and gals, between this and this has widened. So I have moved the hand wheel. Now, before I go any further, I need to do something else. If you look down, you will see, adjust our view, you will see that when that hand wheel comes off, it's going to fall somewhere. <laughs> Gravity's gonna pull it either here or here. I don't wanna scratch the hand wheel, and I definitely don't wanna scratch my beautiful pink paint. So I'm gonna create a little, a little landing pad for this hand wheel. Now I would like to grab hold of it when it comes off, but I've got two hands and I have no assistant. So let me set this up and I'll show you um, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Okay, well, I was looking around, and if you might just have a, a oh, I don't know, a, a towel that you can roll up. I managed to find, this is a cover that came with uh, one of the machines I bought. It was a, it's like a quilted machine cover, just, it's like a dust cover. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put that right here. And so, if this comes off without me catching it, it's going to land in a nice cushion it's not going anywhere, it's not gonna hurt anything or get hurt. That would be really silly to do. You know, you, you can, <laughs> the last thing you wanna do is make your machine look older because you were trying to make it uh, better. Okay, so where are we in this little, so we're gonna take the rubber end of the, of the hammer, again, come down on either side of this piece, do not hit this piece, because that's not going to help you with your hand wheel and you don't want to damage that. So we're going to just tap it and I'm over here with the mallet you guys saw earlier and I'm just going to tap. And I'm going to come on this side of this metal, um, uh, whatever that is, that, that bracket. I'm going to come on the other side of it, also clearing the metal bracket. Let's do... Here we go. And the gap's getting a little wider here. Now, one thing you can do, sometimes you'll get progress and then your progress will plateau. And <laughs> you'll be sitting there thinking, well, okay, now what? All right, now, <clears throat> one of the things that's happening is the belt is is actually angled out, which that, and obviously because it's not gonna be lined up straight because we're moving the hand wheel. Well, one of the things you can do is now that you've got a little bit more movement or more of a gap here, go back with your penetrant oil and put a little bit more in. Again, don't flood your machine with this stuff. You're just gonna have more stuff to clean. And, um, and I just got it on my cover, which kept it off of the machine and not a big deal. The cover will get uh, laundered. Let's see. All right, so we can let this sit for a while and do its magic. You could apply uh, with a hair dryer. You could apply some heat, but uh, and sometimes that's necessary. Uh, if you're very brave, you can try using a heat gun. But remember what I've told you guys about heat guns. They're very powerful, and you can damage things in a hurry if you're not paying very close attention. You can also burn yourself. So um, heat guns are strong medicine, and I prefer to, to even just use penetrant oil here. And a hair dryer, again, 
uh, you want to be careful with that too, but you can apply a little heat. But in this case, I'm just going to give the penetrant oil a little bit more time to work its magic, and we will see what we get after a little time passes. Okay, guys, we uh, I let the penetrant and the more the additional three-in-one oil sit there and do its thing, and then I was tapping. Now I showed you guys earlier. Wanted to kind of correct myself here. I was showing you you want to always cover any hand wheel you're trying to do this to uh, with uh, just to cover it to make sure you're patting it a little bit because you don't want to scratch it you don't want to damage it and that's if you're using a piece of wood right or um, I'm trying to think of something else in the case of what I had I turned this rubber uh, this is actually pretty comfortable uh, and I used that and because I used the rubber it was it was not in danger of damaging our hand wheel so if you saw me, it's like, hey, what happened to the fabric? That's what I was doing. But again, you may not have this. Um, this actually fits. Rubber mallets may or may not be easy to attach here, and then you can tap them. Now, what's happened is um, this drive shaft, which you can now see right here, uh, and it has old oil. Of course, it was oiled at the factory in Pavia, Italy, long ago. And again, I don't know that it's been taken off before, but it sure did come off. Uh, it did move. Now, one of the things you can also do, not with a metal edge, right? You can take it and you can tap. Let's say you're getting some movement like I did. You can tap it back. And by moving it back and forth gently, you are basically helping to loosen it. Because remember, you're loosening it here, but you've also got this other side. So, um, so having restored a number of neckies before, I consider myself to be darn lucky. This can often take a lot longer, but if yours is like that, I want to make sure you guys understand if you're trying to get a hand wheel off of a necky, what you just saw me do is unusual. If yours is not this easy to, uh, to come off, don't feel bad. It's not you, it's the machine, I promise, because uh, it's, I've almost had to fight a lot harder than this, almost on every necky I've ever restored. But this one is uh, very forgiving. I'm, I'm very pleased. Um, so, once we've done this, what is our next, what is the next thing we need to do? I'm keeping my padding here because I don't want to, uh, if I drop this wheel, I want it to drop into somewhere nice and, nice and soft, okay? So I'm just gonna keep pulling and off it came uh, along with the belt. And of course, as I do with all of the machines that I overhaul, I'm going to be going and definitely cleaning. Yeah, there's some, there's some three in one oil here, but that's, I want to go in and clean the grooves of the pulley because the pulley, you know, the belt needs friction on the pulley. Um, and so if we look here, we'll see, you can see inside and, um, what we, will, bleh, what we will be doing is uh, cleaning and um, checking out our hand wheel and our hand wheel assembly. You can see here our, our drive shaft, our lovely drive shaft. And um, this is uh, the removal of a Nicky hand wheel. And again, I'll be inspecting the, uh, the belt, the belt, as far as I can tell, one of one of the ways you can do this, guys, you can always uh, 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 check check your machine below and see if there's been any kind of crumbling going on. The old belts, as they degrade, you will get a little bit of crumbling. People often use belts, you know, long long periods of time. Uh, but uh, if your belt needs replacing, these are generic belts. They're not expensive. This one may be fine. I may not even need to replace it uh, because Usually a belt will have been replaced at least once in the life of a machine that goes back to the late 50s, early 60s. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. And remember, when you're doing what you just saw me do, whenever you're trying to get a hand wheel to move, okay, you several things you want to be cautious of. This, now if we had to, we could have removed this bracket here. There are two screws. It simply, it's, it offsets and helps us set the gauging for our um, uh, bobbin winder device. But in this case, I didn't have to, but you could have if you wanted to. Don't lose the screws, just, just hold on to them. And then uh, 
you should you should be good to go as far as that is concerned. But one thing to remember <clears throat> is the angle. If you come down, if you're doing this and you come at it at an angle like this, it's going to be harder to get the hand wheel off. The other issue you're going to have is you don't want to um, you don't want to warp your hand wheel. And these hand wheels are built really strong. And I'm actually this is even more uh, important with the aluminum wheel because it's softer. But your wheel, you want it to be true, right? And what we did here is totally fine. But if you come in at an angle like this, or um, or you hit it too hard, again, remember it's 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 a stoutly built machine. But you you want to protect it when you're trying to get it off. Okay, uh, I'll be going in and cleaning this drive shaft, cleaning the inside of the wheel, and when we're done, we'll put a nice film of of new sewing machine oil on this uh, on on the drive shaft, and everything should be hunky dory. But uh, oh, and the one last thing when you're doing this. Depending on the tool that you have, remember you have all of this part of the machine. So be careful that you don't whack or damage something over here, especially with something like a hammer, right? I was being very cautious and, and knew what I was doing with it. But if you're, you know, sometimes you're, you're focused over here, like I got to get this wheel off and you're not, you're ignoring the fact that you've got this beautiful machine over here to protect, okay? So again, uh, if you get one of these and neckies will often be like a dog with a bone. They don't want to loosen because the um, the spacing between the parts was so well done. It was so tight, uh, which is one of the reasons Nekis make such great machines because there's almost no vibration in them, or at least a lot less than some of the other brands. Thanks for watching, guys. I've had people asking me about this. This is one of the ways to do this. There are others. You can always look at other videos uh, maybe someone else has shown you how to get hand wheels off. Uh, different ways to do it. This is the way I have found that has worked, worked for me. Um, so anyway, stay tuned. We will continue uh, talking about Neckies and, and their magnificent engineering. And hopefully have this machine ready in the next week or so. Uh, and have somebody who's already interested in it. Well, one of my viewers, actually. And... Uh, and if, if they do not, do not purchase it, it will be listed uh, on the Kijiji site. I have no machines, guys. This is the first time in a long time I have no machines listed uh, as available. Uh, I have been gathering some. You guys have seen the videos I've made on the machines. I've been, you know, I pick up when I find a machine I think is a good candidate. I'll go and get it. Um, and, uh, but I haven't been able to show machines haven't been not been doing that indoors with the pandemic and but we're getting into spring so I'm trying to get some machines ready um, so that um, uh, I'll have something to offer to uh, uh, people who who are looking for machines like they used to build them but machines that are ready to sew thanks for watching and uh, look for uh, this machine and and I'm sure uh, a couple of more future videos take care